Hi Skillshare students. We are just going to quickly go over some of the supplies that you're going to need for my class. Introduction to watercolor painting on Yupo paper. And the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is Yupo paper. Um, they come in pads like this. You're going to need the white. There are 10 sheets in each pad that just pull right out. And yes, it's going to be very strange if you've never worked with this. It's very slick. Um, not like watercolor paper at all. So you're going to need a pad. I don't really care what size. This is a 9 by 12. This is kind of my standard size because I can cut it to an 8 by 10 easily. I can get a 5 by 7 out of it. For the projects and some of the things leading up to the projects that we're going to do, they're mostly 4 by 6 or 5 by 7. So the size of the pad, you can get 5 by 7, 9 by 12, or 11 by 14. Just depends on how much extra paper you want to play around on your own with. So you just choose what's best for you. Like I said, you can cut down any of these to the size that you're gonna need or the size that you want for the project. Um, the next thing you're gonna need are paints. I am recommending tubes because we are only gonna use four colors with this class. I'm keeping it very simple. Um, this is the basics, so I don't wanna overwhelm you. If you happen to have watercolor paints at home, like a pan of a bunch of colors, that's fine as long as you can find colors very similar or exactly the same as these because I've chosen these because of how they mix together and they blend. So I'd really like you to get these colors. The first color is cerulean blue. This is a very bright, I guess in the turquoise family, except it's more blue. Um, cerulean is just one of my go-to colors. I love how crisp and clean it is. These are eight milliliter um, tubes, so they're the small tubes. Also, this is a student grade. I don't want you to spend a fortune. I use Winsor & Newton professional grade um, paints, but you don't have to spend that money if you don't want to. Cotman's makes, Windsor & Newton actually makes Cotman's. So this is the student grade version of Windsor & Newton. And these are, this one was 450. And this is actually one of the most expensive colors. They're usually 275 to about $5. Um, so these are really well priced as compared to the professional tubes. So Cerulean Blue is the first color. The next color I want you to get is Payne's Gray, and Cotman's does make a Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is one of my go-to colors. It is a very, very dark blue-gray. It almost looks black when you see it um, in the palette like that, but it mixes beautifully with most colors, and I really love it just to darken up things. The next color I want you to get is Burnt Sienna, and yes, Cotman's does make a Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna is a deep um, almost like a red brown orange color <laughs> um, just to it's just one of these wonderful colors that you see in nature a lot and it also blends very well with lots of shades the next color I want you to get is an orange this one happens to be Windsor orange it is a nice medium crisp orange um, you're gonna find lots of oranges out there. Um, so just find one that is nice and crisp. You can see the shade when it comes out. Nice, crisp, medium orange. So those are the only four colors you're gonna need. The other thing I wanna talk about are brushes. Very important. I don't want you to spend a fortune again on brushes. However, all brushes are not created equal. Whereas I don't want you to go out and spend $15 on a small brush, I also would prefer that you do not spend $5 on a pack of 12 brushes because they're just very low quality. Um, medium quality is best for the money. These are not expensive brushes. This is a mix between synthetic and I actually have this brush here is the bristles are actually a mix between synthetic and natural. Um, these two I'm pretty sure are synthetic. So it doesn't really matter just whatever feels the best to you. A better brush is going to hold paint better and you're just you're just gonna it's just gonna be so much better. Um, some of these cheap ones you know the bristles fall out while you're painting just lots of horrible things. They don't hold the water they leave puddles so you want a decent brush. 
I am recommending that you get two different styles. The first style I would like you to have are round brushes. You can see that these are tapered at the end. Um, these are great just basic brushes for just about everything. And I'm using smaller ones for the project that we're going to do and for the work we're going to do. This is a size 8 and the smaller one is a 4 for more detail work. The other brush I would love you to get is a Filbert style. I love these brushes. Um, they are straight at the side you can see rounded and they're very thin. These soak up pigment and water just wonderfully. I can get crisp edges. Um, just, I love these brushes. They also put down paint very well. I mostly use them for carving out things um, and lifting. So I really want you to have a good Filbert style brush. This is a size four and that's as big as you need. So not huge. The next thing I need you to have is somewhere to put your paint. Um, an inexpensive palette like this would be wonderful. These are like 250. Uh, I just have my four colors spread out. I have labeled them. I label all of my palettes, um, even my large ones. I make sure that I take a very small permanent marker and I label my colors. So it would be great if you would do that. This gives you spots to mix and also a place to mix right here. Um, let's see, things around the house that you can find pretty easily and you need. First thing would be masking tape because I tape down the Yupo paper as I work so it's not sliding around um, on my board. And I do have a watercolor board. I have lots of them actually. You don't need a watercolor board. You can just put this on a flat table um, to paint on. That's absolutely fine. The other thing I use constantly are washcloths and I keep them laying on my table because when I'm painting and I wanna change colors or do anything and rinse my brush or just get water off my brush, I'm constantly wiping them on a, um, on a washcloth because I found that it works better than a paper towel, which is what you also need because sometimes Sometimes the brushes will pick up um, the cloth and little pieces off the paper towel and get it in your painting, and, and I don't like that. So um, paper towels are also something you need uh, because we're going to be using them just to wipe things up, uh, things like that. So paper towels, you're also going to need Q-tips. So honestly, I've found that the cheaper ones work the best. For some reason, they have less, again, cloth and linty stuff that comes off of them into my paintings. So these are, I think are honestly from the dollar store. They're super cheap. Um, so those are things around the house. You also are gonna need some kind of reservoir for your water. I use glass, just recycled glass um, jars because I like to be able to see through to um, see how yucky my water is getting because I change it out often. Um, okay, that is pretty much it. That's the supplies you need for this class. I can't wait for you to get started with me in the first lesson. So as soon as you have all this, you're ready to go and I'll see you back for the first lesson.